Why? Turn your camera What's around. Up? How are you? You can't figure this stuff out. You're too old for this. Mate, let me tell you, the technology when you've got 54 million followers is a bit of an issue. I was scoping. I was going. There was this 11,000, 12,000. I was going. Oh, get out! <laughs> What's happening? How are you? I'm good, buddy. What? Jesus! Just, just tilt the camera up a bit. No, 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 no. I want to see the top bit. Your missus been cutting your hair. Oh my goodness! Are you happy with Look it? Look at that. Look sharp. It's beautiful. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm wearing a cap. <laughs> I got the um, I got uh, I got some bad, bad, bad. Uh, yeah, I got a half an hour of bad <laughs> stuff. Mate, I, I had the I had the lawn mower out. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. Uh, how's the family? We're good, buddy. We're good. Where where are you? Are you in Mumbai or where are you? Yeah, we're at home. Just uh, trying to get through, man. It's it's been difficult. It's been um, intense, you know, all over yeah. the world. It's been quite tough. Mm. Um, what's what's been happening in the UK? What's the situation like now? Mate, we're exactly the same. We're in lockdown. We are completely locked down. Um, I've not been up to much. Uh, mm-hmm. We've got two kids running around, but luckily we don't live in the city, so we're not stuck in an apartment like a lot of people. Uh, oh, we've, yes. we've got space, so we've got garden. We opened the swimming pool today, um, mm-hmm. so we're very we're very lucky that we've got space. But um, it's tragic what's happening, huh? Tragic, tragic, tragic. I know, I know, I know. Sweet, you're at Wentworth, aren't you? Yeah, we've got uh, we've got a nice garden out here. I mean, I'd love to be hitting golf balls, but uh, we've been told we're not allowed to. All the golf courses are, are closed, so I do a bit of chipping in the golf in the um, in the garden. But but that's about it. Have you got space where you are? Actually, you know, we we do have space. We uh, we went away to a farm mm. uh, before everything got got uh, intense. So we've been lucky. We actually. have been in in decent space ourselves so we can walk around just within the compound and yeah as i was just going to say just be grateful you don't, you don't mm. know what people are going through just being locked in and you know, I, i can feel for them i see people just trying to get through these days it's it's tough it's tough to watch but i mean in terms of you and in terms of your missus you're obviously incredibly high profile and you mm. would be on the road now i mean i'd be in india now commentating and being on uh, on a, on an airplane every day going from ground to yeah. ground how nice is it yeah. though from from a family's perspective to be able to spend good amount i suppose i should ask you mrs i shouldn't be asking you this <laughs> to be spending time with each other all day every day <laughs> no it's been wonderful it's been actually it's it's the longest we've spent together um since we got married since we've been together actually So really? I know it's it's not yeah it's not ideal. We've never been in one place for this long. Um, yeah. It's bizarre, but yeah, that's been the case. It's it's not a good thing to, you know, sort of single out the situation as something that you've got an opportunity uh, to spend time with. But yeah. um, it is what it is. I mean, we are looking at the positives. We are being careful. You're being cautious, but at the same time, you have to appreciate family time. I was just going yeah, to yeah. say, usually at this time. I'd probably be saying hello to you in Chennai Swami or some of the other stadiums. Yeah, exactly. Not on Instagram exactly. live. So, yeah, these are strange Anna, times. It is, and they say that in the UK it could be if the public don't behave themselves, it could be a June lockdown. I mean, that's stuck in your houses until June to get rid of um, uh, the peak wow. of what's happening at the moment. I mean, and, and you say we have at least we have space. A lot of people don't have space. So, crikey, yeah, I just yeah. hope people behave for three weeks, four weeks. Try and just. Do whatever they can to get through it, and then, and then hopefully we get through the through the rest of it. What are you missing most about not being able to be footloose and fancy free? Nothing. You're not missing anything. Nothing. Apart from your bar- brother, apart from your barber. <laughs> my brother messaged me uh, two days back, and he was like, "I'm dying." Um, so in our place in Gurgaon, uh, near Delhi. We have a gym in the basement. He's never used the gym, and now he's in the gym every day. And you know, he's understanding the importance of that gym. So he told me, "I can't, I can't take it anymore. I need to go out. You know, I, I'm, I'm just getting stuck in the house, and it's difficult." Uh, he's with family as well, but you know, people are just not used to being home. Yeah. And that's when I told him, "Welcome to our side of the world. Welcome to our life. This is our life every day." So. Absolutely. <laughs> we, we are in isolation every day. That's true. 
Jeez, especially especially yeah. you guys in in uh, in India. I mean, at least here we can get out, yeah. and I think you love touring England and Australia and stuff where you can go to the beaches. And but I mean, in India, it's 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 quite intense, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But you know, to be honest, we're just grateful that we are home. We're in one place. You know, with all mm. the travel restrictions now. Imagine if we were still on tour and stuck in some country, and yeah, it could have been very very difficult for everyone around. You know, just stuck in different parts of the world. and um i wanted to ask you what's what's been the mindset of people in the uk how are they dealing with the situation how they're looking at things and is there panic is there sort of uh, Mate, there has been confusion? there has been a reasonable amount of panic i think people stopped pal for the first week or two um uh, a couple of weeks ago um mm -hmm. i mean i don't understand the situation at the moment we live on the on the flag path at heathrow and you can still see some airplanes in the air i saw uh one of the airlines grounded their fleet recently um yeah. british airways were talking about uh, letting go of 30000 people on leave at the moment and so I, i mean i don't i still don't understand how they haven't completely closed the borders here yet um when i came back from shooting that documentary a couple of weeks ago there was quite mm -hmm. a big outcry i flew in from where was i, I was in the weather flap was mumbai or delhi i flew in from somewhere and i walked straight through the border no one's checking temperatures at least in india they were checking our temperatures before i even went into the um uh, the hotel in delhi we had our temperatures checked everything was being checked but it was very laxadaisical here and uh, apparently it's still the same way at the borders which is i mean it's it's crazy to think it's going on like that crazy and the numbers are just going they skyrocket you know that skyrocket that's strange to hear honestly our our response has been quite quite good uh, i mean Yeah. Apart from few people that you would have seen the videos who haven't really respected the guidelines being yeah. laid out, and I just don't understand how that happens. Because you know, if you're looking to if you're looking to address a larger issue, there's a thing of unity that mm. everyone should have, which unfortunately hasn't been the case with everyone. I think 80% of the people have taken it on board, but still, those 20% mm. can be a huge, huge issue uh, going forward. As you said, the spike is immense going into week three and four. So I just hope that yeah. people, you know, get get some sense into them and just. How are you training? Are you training? You know, we actually got all our stuff um, put into a, a big a big car, and and we got our stuff uh, here. Everything mm -hmm. that because I, I I knew that you know if this goes on for longer, you still need to be able to train, and so I've got my lifting Olympic bar and plates, and there's a little garden to run around and. All right, so, Eman. Yeah. Oh, all right, Eman. <laughs> Me and Anushka have been training well. Yes. Mate, I've I've seen it. Don't call it an Olympic bar. You need to be calling it something because the last time I saw legs like yours, they were hanging outside the nest. Little <laughs> little pencil little pencil legs. <laughs> Here they are. You know, it, <laughs> little pencil legs. <laughs> it helps. It helps when you got big legs legs like yours and you still pop a calf muscle. I've never popped my calf in my life. Hey, look at that. It, this, it looked like someone had shot me. <laughs> It was in Pune. I knew I was standing in slips, and I was like, "What the hell just happened to him?" <laughs> so no, no use of big legs if you can't run. I'm sorry. This is very, this is very true. And, and what I'm actually going to say now, leave it to, just leave it, guys. Me and Virat are having a conversation here, and I know that uh, there's there's a lot of people are very interested in this in this interview. We're just talking as friends. We're talking as buddies, and we're going to go back to 2009 now. We're going to talk about Bangalore, and we're going to have some fun. This is just Virat mm -hmm. and I having some fun. This is not for any journalist to take this on one way or another way and to create ridiculous headlines. So please, if you're going to do that, then it's obviously going to finish off any conversations between people who just want to uh, give normal fans some content. So just please respect the conversation. Um, dude, Don't, RC, okay, RC, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Don't what? worry about this big lecture because no one's heard you. <laughs> This is going to go off anyway so I tried. just carry on. Okay, I tried. I tried. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Listen, RC Yeah, go on. Mhm. Mm Talk to me about um the bloke in the middle of the picture that I posted um this morning on Instagram. There was a guy that I posted in between that guy that's <laughs> perfect and pure and has the most amazing beard uh... compared to this guy in 2009. Well, I don't I don't recognize him anymore to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. Yeah, I know. I know. Good old days but we had a lot of fun. We had amazing times together. I think uh, right from 
2008. Mm. You came in 2009, didn't you? Yeah, 2009. Was, I think yeah, that was my first season. Yeah. Yeah, nine and ten, you were with us. Mm. Mm. Yeah, 2009 is when we really sort of um, got it going. We really hit off well from day one, and yeah, there were good times. I mean, you obviously came in as the star player, like the big KP, and you know this. <laughs> Uh, all over South Africa, brew, <laughs> bloody hell! <laughs> yeah, but it was it was fun. I remember all those days and playing with Jock and Dale and Mark Boucher as well. And we, had, um, we had uh, we had Rahul Rahul in our team. We had yeah, um, Anil Kumble, Rahul Dravid, Robin. Dale Stein. We had we had a gun team. Yeah, Manish we came had, on board. Manish Pandey got a century in that season. Remember, you got a century there at Centurion Park. Yep, yep. You what know, was the most. What, um, what you remember you Jesse Ryder and uh, Rule of Pandemov? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about those two. Jeez. You we cannot forget about both of them them in that season. <laughs> they were the highlight of that whole season. How can you forget both of them? That's true. They were bad news. They were bad oh. news together. Justice, that was that a real fun and over. You gave him anything that looked like a bottle of wine, and he just turned it to somebody. It was oh my goodness! <laughs> it was. I mean, the yeah, was funny. Done, I can't really talk about them. Every every single time, um, I get asked a question about you. I always refer to the questions, even though you were a bit of a in yeah. two thousand and nine. You always sat next to the right players who you wanted to learn from the most. You had it. You had a very mm. inquisitive brain. When you were sitting next to the Callisters, the Kumblays, the Drab, you just wanted to learn, didn't you? you? Just wanted to be the best player. Yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty pretty obvious. I mean, for a youngster having all of these people around yourself when you came and you were at the peak of your career, and for me, it was just an opportunity to just absorb absorb as much as I can. If I wanted to go higher and higher, I just had to do it. So, yeah, it was a no brainer for me. There, there's different ways you can look at the IPL um, nowadays. There are a lot of youngsters who still ask those questions. Um, I'm not mm. sure of the other teams, but the people that we interact with, the guys in the Indian team, they ask those questions, which are, um, you know, the right questions. So, yeah, it's it's basically how you look at things. And I always want to just be the best version of myself. And learning from you guys was a no-brainer. Did you think that you would become as good as you become? Never. I was just talking to my coach the other day, two days ago. If someone told me 12 years ago, you'll have. These numbers after twelve years, I would have told them to get lost. No well, chance. That's amazing, huh? I mean, just God's been kind. If your if your if your mind's in the right place, if mm. you're thinking about the right thing, you have the right kind of vision, mm. and to keep following, regardless of all the noise around you, yeah. the results follow. If you yeah. look at the numbers and keep striving for the numbers, then the numbers go down, the career goes down, everything is lost. So what that's are you striving? What do, what do you strive for now? Every time you come at you come out and bat, whether it be for um, uh, RCB or for India. What like, are you just? You're just thinking. In game is to win, and how do I win this game? You're not thinking about anything. There's no other clutter. Not at all. Not at all. For me, the most important thing is how can I contribute to make my team win, because that is what we started playing cricket for. Mm. You know, when we were really very really small. So yeah. I don't think why that intent should change, why that mindset should change. Mm. It hasn't honestly changed with me, you know. There's a lot of things that people try and create in India. They they try and you know cook things up, stir things up. I'm, yeah. You have experienced that a lot when you were playing as well. So yeah, it's, it's basically you just have to block the noise. And whenever I go to bat now, I know I understand that cricket is a small part of our lives, and I need to be able to make the most of the opportunity that I have in front of me. Yeah. And I have a larger responsibility now, you know, to be able to maintain this culture of fitness, of, of taking the team in the right direction. And I mean, you just have to be grateful that you have this opportunity, and you know, you, yeah. you just need to make sure all your energy is in the right place to be able to do that. Where did your nickname Chiku come from? <laughs> Chiku actually came from, you know, MS has sort of uh, made my nickname famous from behind the stumps in the stump mics people pick up. They call me Chiku actually like I'm their neighbor or something like that in India. They'll shout out, "Oh, Chiku, once more, no, please!" And I'm like, <laughs> "I have a name. You don't know me, but you can't call me Chiku." <laughs> Jeez. So when this all finishes, you're gonna walk down the street, Chiku. Yeah, I, I get called out uh, by the name of Chiku all the time. No one calls me Virat anymore. Either Kole or Chiku. That's it. 
It's amazing. Um, and I come to India and they all call me Peter. I'm saying, who the fuck's Peter? <laughs> Peter. Peter! 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 <laughs> no, I got, I got this nickname um, by uh, a coach we had in the state team. Actually, the Ranji Trophy, our first class teams. And I used to have big uh, cheeks back then. And I had in you, 2000... Sorry, I, sorry, I sorry, sorry. You used to have what? Big cheeks. Big cheeks. Cheeks, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for clarifying. I just, I didn't hear you correctly. <laughs> I had big cheeks <laughs> back then. Yeah. In 2007, I, I thought I'm losing, I'm losing hair. My, my hair's uh, shedding. I'm having a massive hair fall. So I got my hair cut really short like yours now. I look like a clown and I have big ears. So my, my cheeks stood out and my ears stood out. And um, so we used to have this comic uh, in India, like a comic book when we were growing yeah. up called Champak. It was called Champak. Yeah. And there was a, there was a rabbit in that comic. Um, yeah. That character's name was Chiku. So the coach called me Chiku the rabbit because I had big ears. So that's where the nickname came from. And then people started taking it up and, you know, it, it went up to God knows where else. Brilliant. Brilliant. And, mm. and tell me, um, RCB, a lot of people, since this thing went out, I mean, I've had such a busy phone in the last 24 hours. I mean, it's crazy. Why? And one of, the, well, one of the big things was they want to ask, why have RCB not won a title yet? I mean, we get asked it all the time. We have to try and explain it in the commentary box. It's like, oh, my God, geez, just stop asking the same question. <laughs> Do you get sick of the same yeah, questions? Actually, look, when you have, um, when you have in, in like history in the previous seasons as well, when you've had the biggest players who played for RCB, obviously there's going to be much more attention on the team. Now you see, uh, even with this team, myself, AB, Chris Gale, you know, um, Dale had played recently as well. And, you know, yeah. all these big, big players have played for RCB. So we're always going to be more in focus. But, you know, we actually spoke about it. We've reached... Um, Three finals. We haven't mm. won either single one of them. We've reached three semifinals. But um, yeah, those things are irrelevant. <laughs> those things are irrelevant. <laughs> As uh, you know, till the time you don't uh, win that title. So look, we feel the same as everyone, to be honest. You know, we, we mm. keep talking about the team that we have. We've, even when we've had the best teams, we've just not been able to do it. But yeah, that's, that's one of our main goals. We actually deserve to win a title, to be honest, because... Is um, that something that you are focused on now? You um, We'll move on to Indian cricket in a minute, but is that is that something that, I mean, you've achieved almost every single thing in the game. Your numbers are crazy. Is, do you really want to win an IPL? You know, actually, I've realized something that to go after something so badly, it, it, it keeps running away from you. And I remember all the times when we've done well in RCB, we've never thought of whether we're going to win the IPL or whether yeah. we're going to reach the semis or knockouts or anything like that. But it's just that added pressure whenever we've played in the recent past, we've just thought, this is the season, this is the season. And, you know, it's just, it's just blown us all over the place. So I think it, we just need to get that joy back. And at yeah. this stage of my life, to be honest, you know, I, I give everything that I have on the field. How old are you now? Like, I'm going to be 32 this year. 32? Yes, sir. Jesus. Okay. No, I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, 38, 39, somewhere around there. 31. I'm, I'm 88 born, so how old am I now? <laughs> I, don't, I can't even count. I was shit at math. <laughs> There's the headline tomorrow. Virat doesn't know how old he is. <laughs> I'm 31. I'm 31 at the moment. If that's as bad as it gets, then we've done really well in this, uh, in this session. Um, I'm 31. 31. 31? Yeah. Okay. And we get on to Indian cricket and we talked about your transformation from 2009 to the person that you are now and, and how fit you mm -hmm. are and how um, structured you are and how, how much you train. Um, was that something that you desperately wanted to bring to Indian cricket? I remember playing against India from, we play, when my, my first time I played against India was 2006. We toured India after that 2005 Ashes and there was Tendulkar, mm -hmm. Laxman, Dravid, Kumble. Uh, Harbhajan, Ajit Agarka, um, Zahir Khan, mm -hmm. Ashish Nira, all these guys were playing. And I mean, you'd hit it to extra cover and you'd run four. Yes, no problem. You just run four. Whereas now, 
the team that you've got, you hit it to extra cover, you don't even think about running. Is that something that you've been so focused on and dedicated to bring into Indian cricket, that, that strive to make sure that in the field, we're the best? Look, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I started playing in 2008. Um, I saw 2009, 10, 11 is when we won the World Cup. When you, um, when you played that shit shot and you, we drew the game in uh, Bangalore. Um, eleven Thanks. is when I got eleven is when I got you out stumped down the leg side with right. bowling a legend. We're gonna get there. <laughs> We're gonna get there. Just talk about you. Okay, okay, okay. So I saw two thousand nine, ten, eleven. Uh, these were my regular years with India, <laughs> and then and then twelve. Uh, that England tour when we uh, came to England in twenty eleven. Yeah. We we lost badly there. Um, yeah, you did. Twenty twelve. Yeah, 2012 Australia tour was a difficult one as well. So I thought, you know, there's always a natural transition that happens in every team. And I was lucky that I was in, in the center of that transition when it was happening. And um, I got the opportunity to see both sides of things, like what we were lacking as a side and what the world was catching up on and they were becoming far more superior compared to us. So the plan was clear. I mean, you know, when the next lot of players come in, this is the direction we're going to go in and to be honest, I was I was lucky that you know I played with a group of players who were driven, similar age group, and together from number seven or eight in the world in Test cricket for three years now we've been number one. So it's it's been quite an astonishing journey. You know, it's, it's quite unbelievable to be honest because we had no experience and we beat everywhere everyone, most places. You know, we competed mm. everywhere we went in the world, and it's just that that to be able to come to the top of world cricket again has been a great journey. But then again, it gave us. Um, a vision, a goal to achieve, and all all our focus was towards that. And, and with the yeah. IPL, you see a lot of teams that come to India now, and they're a lot more competitive. I remember we came to India and actually yeah, beat yeah, India yeah. in 2011, yeah. 2012, and that's because yeah. a lot of us actually feel at home in India as foreigners. Yeah. India have an issue traveling abroad. They have a real issue traveling abroad. What do you think the biggest issue for you guys is traveling abroad? I'm Look, talking now, results. Um, now, to be honest, you know, before when we used to tour, it used to happen sporadically. Like we would come to England every three or four years and in yeah. between there was nothing. But India, they would, you guys would come every year for the IPL and get used to the conditions and so on and so forth. But now with, when there's so much cricket happening, we don't feel any conditions are alien, to be honest. Now, right. I feel like now um, traveling uh, to other countries and playing at home is a level field. Anyone can beat anyone anywhere. Because we're yeah. playing each other so much in different conditions all the time. Australia, I remember we went to Australia for a whole tour. And then suddenly, three weeks after that, they were in India playing ODIs against us. Yeah. That would never happen before. So now it's not a, it's not a you know, question of whether we know the conditions or not. It's all about the mindset, the fatigue, whether you, you play too much cricket, whether you're ready mentally, physically or not. So I think those are the challenges now. Now we don't feel like any condition is sort of alien to us. And that, I think, is the most exciting part. Do you feel like you play too much? I remember in my career, I was having huge, huge arguments and disagreements with the ECB because of my schedule. And all I wanted mm. to, the ECB to manage was my schedule because I was playing every T20 game, every one day international, every uh, test match cricket. And I didn't want to miss out on the IPL, which is what guys yeah. don't miss out on now. Do you feel like you play too much cricket? Look, I've been taking breaks. Honestly, um, I felt like last two, three seasons I was doing too much. So I started yep. taking, uh, taking um, breaks every now and then, T20 matches here and there, uh, maybe a ODI series here and there, because I didn't want to miss any test cricket, to be honest. And um, T20 cricket, in between, I just felt like there were too many games that had no relevance. And um, mm. i would spoken about it in the press as well, quite a few times, that you know you just can't have matches where you have zero... Um, sort of motivation or energy uh, and yeah. I don't like to play like that Yeah, but I've just thought about it I've been playing three formats for nine years now uh, including the IPL along with captaincy for six years so it's 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 not easy it's not easy no. but uh, no. I'll see I'll see I said two two three years more I think till the, the next World Cup I'm going to give it all and then figure out where I stand which format what not, all those questions later. And, 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 and obviously, the, one of the biggest changes that you've made, and I know that, I mean, I campaign for um, wildlife all the time, and the thing that people hammer me the most about is eating meat. 
Now, you're vegetarian. You made that decision because, believe me, in 2009, 2010, when we hung out, you weren't a vegetarian. <laughs> you're now, no, no. You're now, you're now a vegetarian. No, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't a vegetarian till 2018. When we actually came to England, um, I left eating meat just before the test series started. And Why? I'd been thinking. I'd been thinking about it. I'll tell you the real reason. I mean, people use different kinds of reasons, and they try yeah. and figure out themselves. So in 2018, when we went to South Africa, I got um, a cervical spine issue um, while playing a test match. You got at what? Centurion. A cervical spine issue. One of the discs in my cervical spine, they bulged out and it compressed a nerve which was running straight till the little finger of my right hand. So it, give me, it gave me a, a tingling sensation. I could, I could barely feel my little finger on the right hand. Wow. I couldn't sleep at night. Yeah, it was hurting like mad. I couldn't sleep at night. And then I got my test done um, and my stomach was too acidic. So I was I, my body was creating too much uric acid. My body was too acidic. So wow. what was happening was, even though I was taking calcium, magnesium, everything, one tablet was not sufficient for my body to function properly. So my stomach started pulling calcium from my bones and my bones got weaker. And that's why I got this issue. So wow. that's why I stopped eating meat completely um, in the middle of the England tour to cut down that uric acid and the acidity in my body. And then I've never felt better in my life, to be honest. I felt amazing. It's, it's almost been two years now and it's the best decision I've taken in my life. Really? It's amazing. I mean, it's you look, you, you, yeah, you look amazing. And I, I mean, I've tried that now. So uh, I've seen all this and I watched that film, that uh, Game Changers or whatever, that film. Yeah, I think yeah. you were part of that film. And um, I mean, I, I have vegetarian days. Jess and I have vegetarian days at home. And you do feel so light. You feel amazing, don't you? Yeah, amazing. I mean, I've never felt better uh, waking up. I've yeah. never felt better when I have to recover after a game. I mean, if you make me play three games a week, which are intense, I'm at it 120% every game. I can, I can recover within a day after a test match and go on another test match. It's, it's so much better than being on beat. Uh, being vegetarian now made me feel... Honestly, I felt like, why didn't I do it before? You know, I should have done it two, yeah. three years earlier, yeah. to be honest. It's completely changed everything. You start feeling better. You start thinking better. Your body's lighter. You're more positive. You have more energy to do more. So yes, overall, it's just been an amazing, amazing change. Are you guys doing it as well? Thank goodness. I don't have to play three games a week because there's no way in this world a South African can go without meat, dude. I do it for maybe <laughs> one day, one day or two days a week. If I'm feeling really generous, I'll give it two days. But there's no ways. I just can't do it. I mean, I've got a beautiful barbecue out here. We oh, I, I mean, I just I, as much as I would love to, as much as you're trying to sell, sell a great story, Mm -mm. It just, uh, it, it just, I mean, I, and, and, and I do feel great. And that movie, mate, that, that Game Changers film that I watched, it, it really does paint a really good picture. But I just couldn't do it, mate. Couldn't do it. No way. Yeah. It's, it's, but I mean, but you, talk, you talk about that, um, that, uh, that ability to be able to turn on every single day. I was running on a treadmill in, uh, in, Jeez, I don't know where it was. And uh, MS came and j jumped on the treadmill next to me. And mm -hmm. first of all, to see MS in the gym at that stage, I was like, oh, Jesus, what are you doing in here? Um, <laughs> and, and, and we started talking about you and started talking about your leadership. It was at the time that he was just starting to finish in that. And he said, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that he said that would interest him would be whether or not you would be able to... Um, maintain that uh, energy on the field, that excitement on the field, that aggressive mm -hmm. leadership on the field. And I said mm -hmm. to him, I said, Jesus, I said, surely you cannot love cricket that much that you want to just start swinging punches every time you walk out onto the field. <laughs> and, you've, and you've done it. How, is, why is it because of your diet or is it because of what's in, your ear, in between your ears? <laughs> Not that there's much there. What, what is it? Yeah, there's, there's a bit of crazy up here as well. I, I wouldn't deny I, it. I know. But <laughs> Look, as I said, I mean, you, I know, I know. And you can ask MS that as well. When I played under MS, I was in his ears every over. Maybe we can do this. Maybe we can do that. If, you know, there was a time where you had to field on the boundary, I would run from long on to long on. I wanted to be in the right place at the right time. Even now, even if I'm captain or not, I don't think standing on the field, I need to behave myself because I'm captain. 
I need to be able to enjoy the game first and think about yeah. strategy and all that later because that is who I am. So I cannot play any other way. I will give yeah. 120% every ball. And yeah. I made a promise to myself, the day I stop feeling like I can do it, I'll stop playing. Really? I want to be able to play till the time I play the way I play right now. Oh, with the geez. same intensity. So, 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 we, so, so we're going to have to keep talking over the next few years about how you want to jump in a, in a, in a UFC ring every time you hop on a, on a cricket field. <laughs> I yeah, just like to get it going. <laughs> I was gonna swear a little bit, but I'll stop. That's what my my teammates and bowlers say as well. They say you celebrate more than us when we take a wicket. I mean, I, it's swear, a good I can't thing. control myself. It's a, yeah, good it's thing. a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. I spoke you to Ravi last yourself. week. I spoke to Ravi yeah. last week, and we were talking about sledging, uh-huh. and we we're talking about um, aggression on the field. And he said, "Well, we do have a fairly aggressive leader." <laughs> I just started <laughs> pissing myself. I was like. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Oh yes, just very. <laughs> I mean, that helps. That helps. <laughs> huh? Yeah, that surely helps. That surely helps. Anyone who's feeling a bit whether I should say something or not, they just need to look at me and say, "No problems. Go for it." <laughs> <laughs> but um, but clearly you love the dudes off the field, and uh, you just get into mm-hmm. that. It's called white line fever, isn't it? Where you get over that white line, and I know there's yep. millions of people who are going to watch this and are, are seeing this. You just have the white line fever where you will just do anything within the rules to win the game for India. It's simple. Yep, yep, absolutely. And you know, it's look. I, you know, I've known you. I've known you. I've known you for a lot of years now. And you know, people say I've experienced something very strongly. When people don't know you, they have a, a very, very different picture of you that they paint in their heads. Mm. And I have no problems in people thinking that the person might be like this. but when you don't know the person when you haven't interacted with the person for someone to say that the, the guy is like that i yeah. don't agree with that because yeah. you can't create a reality for someone else in your own head and then treat them accordingly okay. i never do that i would yeah. i would i would meet people i would i would get to know you even though i see your body language on the field and i feel like oh that 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 doesn't seem really nice but if you meet me outside the field and we got mm. along yeah. i got along with pouch you know there was there were different views about bouts as well i got along with him amazingly well with you as well so it's about accepting people the way they are and i think that's important you yeah, step yeah. off the field and you accept people as just human beings when your competitive spirit comes out there's no problem in being being competitive being aggressive you've had duels on the field it never gets mm. to you know physically punching someone in the face i mean it would never get to that it's it's maybe. basically just get, yeah maybe with you it could have a few times <laughs> but not with me not with me i'm too small i can't take on the big guys physically <laughs> that helps does it does it um does the ipl and the friendships that you created in the ipl make it a little bit more difficult to when you're playing against australia to give a volley to a teammate in another opposition or does it not matter when you play for india you're playing for india and i don't care if you play for rcb with me without me whatever it is i'm going to beat you and that's it um Look, IPL has definitely made things much better when it comes to respecting people, especially when you get to know someone. You know, you you yeah. you don't feel internally. I mean, I played against AB. Never in my dreams will I think of sledging AB. It just won't come to me naturally. Yeah, I would just say, okay, if an opportunity comes to me, I'm trying trying to take that opportunity with very both my hands any day of the week. I want to get him out, but I won't get yeah. into his face in a way that. you know it can spoil our friendship our our relationship because you exactly. have to understand at the end of the day those things last you longer in life so whoever you get to know obviously it's it's a mutual respect both ways the line is not crossed but mm. otherwise you know we always looking for something yeah. spicy to get in the zone eventually because you want to be at your best and if that that's what gets you why not What's been your most fun innings? I'm not going to ask you what's been your best innings. What's been your most fun yeah. innings? Because I actually got asked this in an interview a couple of months ago. I was doing something, and I said, "What's been your most fun innings?" And and mm-hmm. I was like, "Shit, I've never been asked this before." It's always, "What's your best innings? What had the most impact? What's been your What's been the most fun? The fu- the one where you just got that was so much fun. It's just like Jesus. I just got there and I just went bang, 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 bang. Do you have any? Uh... Yeah, it's a I tough question, one. isn't it? Yeah, I do have one. Um, it was against uh, Kings Eleven in the IPL. Um, it was, I think, a thirteen, 
a 14 over game or 15 over game and i got 112 overs i remember and yeah so that was one of the days where i felt like jeez i'm just just you know connecting everything and you just felt like you couldn't get out and i've never felt like that before just to be able to hit every ball and not yeah. have that fear of getting out it was amazing so that has been my most fun innings what about you and talking uh, uh, mate it was such tell a long yours, time ago huh? do you remember no I'm sure you don't remember any of your innings after i i got you out stuff <laughs> <laughs> you know i was going to talk about Let's your bowling there but 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 the one before i get to your uh, your your beautiful length that you used to bowl and that very 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 um traditional um uh, action excellent mm. what you talk about fear and there'll be a lot of youngsters watching this and people say mm. oh play without fear don't worry about the mm. consequences for youngsters watching this in your mm. position walking out to bat now you're lucky you've you've made it in the game you the best that are, that's playing at the moment your numbers are fantastic at the start of your career or in the middle of your career even now what's been your lowest the lowest you've been what what's the lowest you've been in your career i think the lowest point in my career was the england tour in 2014 where that's that's one phase where i felt like you know when as a batsman you know you're going to get out in the morning when you wake up that was the time i felt like that that there's Shit. no chance i'm going to run really and yeah to be able to, and still to get out of bed and you know just get dressed for the game and to go out there to to go through that knowing that you will fail was yeah. something that just just ate me up it just demolished me completely and i told i promised myself i'm never going to allow myself to feel like that ever again in life but that was the lowest point where i and that happened for all the younger guys listening to think right in the game that happened because i was too focused on doing well from a personal point of view wow. i wanted to get run i could never yeah. think of what does the team want me to do in this situation i just got too engulfed with england tour if i perform here you know test cricket in my mind i'm going to feel established and all that all that crap on the outside which yeah. was not important at all it just ate me up it just i just kept going into a into a downward spiral and i just couldn't get out of it Horrible. um and, and technique wise did you did, is it all about is it all about just making sure that you prepare while well. i talk about training well making sure that the day before you don't leave any stone unturned so that whatever happens in in the bright lights just happens but you got to be able to practice well is that right yeah that's true but you know when you're playing so many games now and me and abi have spoken about this quite a bit we don't come to every session and we don't bat for long periods anymore so if i have two sessions of batting and I, and i go to the first one and the first one's precise i would take the next day off relax make sure i'm physically right and good to go 120% i would not go to the ground just for the sake of it if i'm not getting anything out of that practice session i will not go to the stadium anymore so that's obviously a gradual change but at the start of my career i wanted to learn i wanted to see much as much as i could i wanted to observe other people and that was a different kind of preparation back then but mm. now it's become sort of different and i think technique also it's it's everything's men- mental i mean you you've played in a time where you were walking and hitting fast bowlers coaches don't teach you that so it's yeah. it's it's innovation it's staying ahead of the opponent it's thinking one step ahead of the opponent and these things if you are aware if you're thinking about how to win the game for your team these things come to you if you're too personal uh, in your approach you're too self centered you're thinking only about yourself then you're just looking for ways to get out eventually because people are going to find you out you're not getting out of your comfort mm. zone because you don't want to fail so this is this is this is a, a gradual sort of transition that happens over the years but as a youngster you know i was at every practice session i was in there i just yeah. wanted to be watching people observing asking questions asking questions i think conversations are the most important thing for any cricketer yeah you say you used to run it run it better than they don't coach that they also don't catch coach the switch hit something that you can't do so um at least there's something i can do that you can't do yeah i know and something that you will never be able to do and i did which was to get you out <laughs> that's my, that's hey! that's very really easy to do now i just I want to tell every single person watching this that I, i i mean i would love to show you our whatsapps he's mentioned about 75000 times in the last 3 or 4 days since we this since we said we did this interview when can i talk about how i got you out when can i and i i, I can't remember you can't remember 
<laughs> I don't know exact. I think it was Southampton T20 if I'm not wrong. Stump down the leg sure side. <laughs> it was your famous one leg flick where you took your they took your back leg off the crease and MS got you stumped. And by the way, I'm the only bowler in cricket history. Know this. I'm the what? only bowler in the history of cricket. to get a wicket in international cricket without bowling a legitimate delivery and you were the batsman i got Seriously? you stumped on a wide ball it was zero balls one wide one wicket <laughs> no one's done that no one <laughs> wow thank is, you so much the thing is there's method in my madness mate i just wanted to be able to produce something for you that was something we could talk about all if in in the future years when you join us in the commentary box it'll be something we talk about that we show i mean it's 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 french you know i saw you i saw you walking off and you'd played with me two years and you wouldn't even look at me i was celebrating you were so embarrassed you just looked down and you walked away <laughs> <laughs> and i laughed so hard after that game i was like bloody hell he didn't want to look at me because i would have laughed in your face <laughs> oh wow I think I might have broken a bat there, actually, because I just thought, Jesus, I can just see this coming. Forever, he's going to abuse me. Forever, and it's still happening. And that was what nine, ten, nine years ago. Prick. <laughs> the thing is, as well, it's it's MS too. So I, I mean, we're having some fun with commentary uh, with MS ah, uh, yes. a few years ago, and Jesus, he never got me out. So there's a lot of people who'll be watching this too that always say, "Oh, you're MS Dhoni's first Test wicket." I refer. Um. I remember I, know, I, know. I, re- I referred it and it was not out remember yeah yeah and they were I'm your first test wicket I'm your first test. he even fucking said it on commentary when I was uh, when I was yeah, but my gago went look the thing is the thing is ms has a point because it came up on and the out. stump mics but nothing came up on the hot spot so he has a point bullshit you no don't mm-hmm. you start back in him yours was out <laughs> you got me out he never got mine me mine was legitimate you can never yes. question that <laughs> yes. You didn't even look to go back. You just walked off. No, I, I was I was never getting out to MS. To you, I don't mind. But yeah, I mean, at least that action, I could at least sort of talk about. Well, I I mean, I didn't really pick it up. It came at an angle. It came at that kind of angle. MS had a bit of a conventional thing, so I was like, I cannot get out to that. That is filth. No, that is the fast bowling. Who's the best? Who's your favorite batting partner? Before we'll finish off with fans on social media now. Mm-hmm. Who's your favorite batting partner? Favorite batting partner. Um, two people that I've enjoyed the most batting with. Um, I love guys who can run really well and who understand um, understand my calling and you know intend to run. So I think MS when playing for India, we've run the best together. And AB otherwise, I mean AB and me are like. Yeah. You don't even need to say anything. It's just the partnership flows. We don't talk cricket as well in yeah. between, and it's just it's just amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, brother, let's just. I've got a load of stuff here that I just want to go over. Just yeah. fans, social media, and and, and I mean, mm-hmm. I, I suppose we play to entertain. We play yeah. for the fans. Um, we're sitting in a situation at the moment where we're having to entertain on Instagram live because you can't go and slap bowlers all over um the Chennaiswami stadium because of what's happening in the world but how important are fans to you how important i mean i just did a little thing here now social media i looked on instagram now ronaldo 210 million followers messi 146 million followers you've got 53 million followers you've got federer at 7 million hamilton at 15 million tom brady at 7 million mcelroy at 2 million mm-hmm. bolt at 9 million mm-hmm. does that come with responsibility it does it does um you know honestly i i see a lot of um backing and love from genuine fans um on social media now the good thing about social media now is that they're able to show you that support and that love um in times that other people are not really willing to so i think i felt this over the years that you know the number of people that like you and they appreciate what you do their intent their energy it really motivates you and it it pushes you in the right direction to be honest because without their contribution without their energy and them wishing well for you you wouldn't be able to do what you're doing on a daily basis there's no chance to be mm. able to get this motivation every day you walk into a stadium people are just shouting your name 30 40000 of them you just get into a zone there's no mm. denying that so 
I mean, these are things that you can't replicate anywhere else. And I absolutely have total respect for that. You know, fans that genuinely love the game, genuinely love what you do, and they respect good and bad equally, I hats off to them, honestly. Big respect. I tell you something, um, you talk about the fans going crazy. I mean, when you walk on the field anywhere in India or wherever, I mean, it's, it's chaos. And I remember playing with Tendulkar, with um, mm. uh, Sevag, with UV mm. and, and, and MS, and it being exactly the same way. It, one thing I will tell you is that when that happens now and you say you get into the zone, just appreciate it. Because if I think there's one thing that I miss. Yeah. I remember playing all those days and you walk onto the field. I remember just playing at the Ferocia Kotler for, for Delhi and ha having that one bumper season. And for the rest of the time, it was just like every time I walked out, KP, KP. like you've got to just, you, you really have got to just, you've got to, you, you've almost got to just bottle it up and just remember it because Dude, those are the best days of your life when people are going crazy like that. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. I think these are things that one needs to appreciate. We are a bunch of uh, the lucky few that get to experience this. Yeah. Even today, with you know, you speak about difficult times now and you understand that the kind of place you are in right now, you, you said you have space to move around, you have a garden, you have a pool. Mm. I see the current situation where people don't have jobs, you know, they're yep. struggling on a daily basis. Yeah. You, you can't have any other feeling than to be grateful. Just have, lo you know, the most amount of gratitude you can because God has put us in a place where we don't have to go through those, those moments. And if in this place as well, we sit down and complain about things, I don't think that that's fair. So, mm. you know, it's just looking at what's happening all over the world. It just makes you feel... You know, where was I really heading? Which direction does my life really want to go in? And I think this, this time will really make us all reflect on it. So, yeah, this is, this is indeed a blessing that we have. I'm going to finish off now. We're going to finish off just with some fans' questions. I went through a load of them. There's about five mm -hmm. or six here. And then I just want one other, one other thing, and then you're done and dusted. You can go back to uh, sweeping the floor and mopping, and, and mopping your bathroom. <laughs> Ronaldo or Messi? Ronaldo. Why? Work ethic, uh, drive, passion, um, all the crap, noise on the outside, deflect it, move ahead, know what you need to do and just get done. Will you shave your beard off? No, never. Why? Chico! Chico. No, I, I don't have I don't have cheeks anymore. But Chico. you know, I look I look horrible without a beard. So I would I would never never have shaved it off. Never. <laughs> um, favorite destination to go with your missus? No cricket. Favorite destination? Uh, no cricket. Uh, Queenstown. We went last the year before. We went to New Zealand. Oh, last year, 2019, Queenstown. Hands down, number one, and then wildlife safari in South Africa. We need to come to your lodge next. Yeah, well, let's hope we let's hope we get some time. It's crazy there. Eh? I mean, it's a it's amazing that, that mm -hmm. whole tra uh, tourism industry, the whole travel industry. I mean, there in Kaziranga, where I was a couple of weeks ago, that's completely shut down for tourism, mm -hmm. and then South Africa is completely shut for tourism. And goodness, mm -hmm. I mean, so many of my mates there now. I mean, we've had to close our lodge. We've had to. I mean, we're looking after our staff yeah. and making sure that they've got a hundred percent pay because they are just amazing. But, geez, it's it's mm. it's a it's a sad situation. But you'll do that. I'll, you guys will get out there for sure. Um, yeah. yeah. Favorite cricketing memory? Actually, coincidentally, you've just called me on the day that we won the World Cup, so that has to be a favorite cricketing memory for me. Was just that what two thousand eleven? Yeah, today. Really. Okay. What a day to call, Gibby! <laughs> <Dig it! laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah. and, I'll, and I'll, I'll only like this one if you answer it the right way. Now, be very careful how you answer this, because this could mm -hmm. end badly for you. Your favorite commentator? My favorite commentator is... It's easy. <laughs> um... My favorite com no, it's not you. Come on. My Excuse favorite me? commentator is Nasser. Okay, me. That's perfect. Too long to answer the question. Please. Thank you, me. That's fine. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go on. Digger. Digger. 
ठीक है ठीक है गुमान ठीक है ठीक है एंड देन आई एम गोइंग टू से देयर इज टू मोर थिंग्स नाउ टेल मी अबाउट दैट यू टोल्ड मी अबाउट दिस द अदर डे दैट आई एम वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज़ आई हैव नेवर नोन एनीथिंग अबाउट इट योर फाउंडेशन दैट लुक्स आफ्टर ऑल द अम नॉन क्रिकेटिंग एथलीट्स व्हाट्स दैट ऑल अबाउट या um set up the foundation in 2013 uh, got it registered in 2016 then we started collecting funds we started doing um, events dinners charity fu- charity functions uh, fundraisers a uh, few options here and there and then eventually we started giving out these scholarships so we understood the challenges so in in india in cricket we have decent facilities to be able to make a career out of you know playing cricket and you have enough academies and places to practice but other sports there are not many places that you can go and have quality practice quality facilities so we wanted to identify uh, for sport in general in the country who are these people and we have a, a panel of uh, you know elite sports people who have played for the country represented in different sports over the years so they select people they they track their progress young kids 14 15 16 who have potential to eventually go on and become world class athletes maybe olympic medal winners or or something like that as well so wow. we take care of their progress we provide nutrition we have a few types wow. with hospitals uh nutrition companies we provide coaches to them as well we provide counseling as well through these experts that i mentioned so yeah we track their progress and uh, you know one all over one india sorry all over india all over india yeah all sports wow. so we obviously track their performance anyone who's who's doing really well and we feel like they don't have the right kind of facilities we just pull them out bring them into the program and just give them a scholarship where we say we're going to take care of you we're going to send you to tournaments take care of your travel nutrition you don't need to worry about anything so we just give them an opportunity a platform and a chance amazing well done mate well done the last i thought i actually thought there's one more thing but there's there's one other thing um golf am i going to get you into the game of golf never never why what's wrong with you because you haven't played golf with me i played golf with um, boucher callis uh, dale in 2008 we went to a golf course in bangalore and i just couldn't keep my legs in place i just kept hitting everything over covers because i would clear my leg and slog it like we do in cricket and they said you got to fetch the ball and play it again i was like no way i'm playing this sport again <laughs> they bloody sent me into the bushes three times i was like thank you <laughs> take your golf club i'm going in you Your your missus has just put a message up there. Chalo 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 dinner time. So I'm going to ask you one more question. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, um, beautiful. The the last one, and I think probably the mm-hmm. most important. Your favorite form of the game, and why? Test cricket. Test cricket. Test cricket. Test cricket. Test cricket. <laughs> Five times. Amazing. Amazing. Why, buddy? Yeah. why because test cricket for me is actually it's a representation of life to be honest you got to you got to keep going when you don't score runs you got to clap for everyone else when you haven't scored a run you got to give everything that you have you got to go back into your room have that same routine wake up every morning come out to play whether you've done well or not and in life you have to do the same you just don't have an option of not competing or not participating so for me test cricket is life and i've learned the most playing test cricket it's made me a better person amazing and you know what i said that the other day when um, they said that they wanted four day test matches and you came out very strongly and you said no i'm not interested in four day test matches i only wanted five day test matches they tried to get me to do something quite lengthy in one of in a debate show and i said guys the facts of the matter are that verat doesn't want five day four day test matches so four day test matches ain't happening and on that note <laughs> don't enjoy your vegetables <laughs> have a banana <laughs> I love you brother. Cheers KP. Thanks. Good to see you. Bye buddy. Bye mate. Bye bye. 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 Cheers. Bye.